If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunanyin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-loved items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information. so humble that I would follow in the name of love you gave pierced and broken to the grave Lord I am captured your love enraptures me I believe you are the son of God I believe my life is safe with you I believe this age will see your glory Come down, come down Behold the Lamb set to shame on earth In the name of love so I believe Behold my God Holiness displayed All my debts are paid Oh, I believe Oh, I believe <laughs> Memikul salimu Rendahkan diri Kau ku ikuti Dalam nama kasihmu Kau sanggup mati bagiku Aku tergagum Kasihmu menawanku Ku percaya kau anak Percaya hidupku selamat Ku percaya kemuliaan Yesus Turunlah, turunlah Anak domba yang dikorbankan Karena kasih Jaya mulia 
If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunanyin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-loved items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information. Your love has invaded my heart Come to me and made me new How could I live but to live for you? Ooh, ooh. I'm leaving my past behind Freedom in Christ is mine Only live for me, I only live for you If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunanyin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-loved items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information.
If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunanyin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-love items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information. Just an amazing time of worship. We we've just started this thing. 
know the pre-service prayer we want to invite the presence of God even in our hearts because he has always been such a beautiful presence in this room amen and I feel like you know why not just capture this moment and find a dwelling place whenever you come in I want to highly encourage those of you who are online come and join us physically why don't we just be, give a big shout of praise to Jesus for those of you on site say come on Woo! it's such a beautiful time yes. to worship God on site and we can't wait to welcome those of you who are online to come and join us for our pre-service prayer we'll come together 10 minutes before service and worship together and let our hearts be prepared for an amazing word and a most amazing time of worship in the presence of God amen amen wonderful if you're here for the very first time I hope you're blessed if you're here for the first time give me a wave anyone here here for the first time yes the sister there hi welcome welcome so good to see you if you're here for the first time we want to warmly welcome you to head on downstairs to the hospitality lounge to say hello to our connectors and our leaders and we would love to give you a very special gift and if you're rushing you can just head on outside to the connect counter and our friendly connectors would love to connect you with you because there is no strangers in this house only family amen, amen. yeah and those of you online as well there should be a link that will be popping up from somewhere here to let you know that you can write and say hello to us on our WhatsApp chat and our connectors would love to get to know you better. You're not just a name on the screen, but you are also a soul and a beautiful life where we love to connect with you better. Awesome. And I believe today is a very special service because we are having a lot of little babies and children there. If you could turn to your right and say hello to the little babies, that's our child dedication service right there. We're going to be dedicating babies because we are a very fruitful and multiplying church amen yeah so good so awesome so yes i am so pumped up right now because i know that the lord is going to do an amazing amazing thing so the next segment of the of our service today is our sibkl news this part is a very important part as well because it shares with you what happens and what goes on even in our church because all these events that we have put together are specially for you because we love to see you grow in community and grow in Christ. Yeah. So why don't you just fix your eyes on the screen right now for the SIBKL News. Want to grow more in your understanding of the Word of God? Join us for our Christian Living module, where we will take a look at multiple topics that will help you progress further into your discipleship journey. For more information, visit the link on the screen. Our final marriage talk for the year is here. Come here as they share about the six keys to a thriving marriage. The details are on the screen now, so see you there. The Healing Ministry has started an initiative called Healing Truth, a podcast exploring the healing scriptures in the Bible through the lens of God's promises to us. Episodes will be updated and made available on Spotify. So go check it out now and be blessed. of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card.
Hello church, why don't we all arise right in this hall? Even you at home, stand up, get on your feet. For Romans 8, 37 says, Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors to Him who loves us. Amen? Amen. We're going to sing a new song, declaring that we are more than conquerors. Love it. Dari Pemenang. Let's declare together. Love it. Dari Pemenang. Love it. Dari Pemenang. Dalam segala perkara. Ini sari kalahkan oleh kuasa darahnya. Jika Allah di pihak kita, siapa dapat melawan? Kita lebih dari pemenang. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Ibarkanlah pancinya Yesus Raja segera.
church, even as we are approaching a season of elections, I'm sure all of you know, on the 19th of November, we all go out to vote. Church, we're going to speak the name of Jesus over our land, amen? Declaring that there is hope and there is freedom in the name of Jesus. Because nothing can stand against the name of Jesus, amen? We're going to declare righteousness, declare freedom, declare justice. The justice of God will rule and reign over our land as we speak the name of Jesus, that there will be hope in every heart and in every mind. Let's sing. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your prayer.
just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Come on, church, let's declare the Prince of Peace will take his rightful place in our nation. That there will be peace and stability, church. Oh, we speak Jesus, the Prince of Peace over our land, over every heart and mind. Oh, the presence of the living God, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Oh, Jesus, the Prince of Peace, be exalted over our land. Jesus, the King of Kings, let your glory fill our land.
of our lives whatever thoughts that we have can we make can we just declare the name of Jesus over it can right now everyone just say Jesus you Jesus, reign Jesus, Jesus you Jesus, reign come you on reign. say it over that area Jesus, Jesus you, you reign. reign Jesus you reign Jesus you reign amen amen thank you Jesus that you reign over our lives, you reign over our family, you reign over our community, you reign over our nation. Heavenly Father, I want to silence the voice of the enemy that says darkness has taken over. Lord, whether it's the family situation, Lord, it's, it's our nation, whatever it is, Lord, we want to silence the voice of the enemy that says darkness has reigned. No, light has come. We have a God that reigns. And so, Lord, today we want to take confidence that we walk, we step into that glory. Lord Jesus, give us that confidence. We have a God that is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing our God can do for our families, for our land, for every part, in every areas that we feel so bleak. Heavenly Father, be big in our lives. Be big in His place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. You know, I just feel it is so good to come into the house of God and just worship. I feel there is power. I want to encourage all those online as well to join us soon. And wor let's worship Jesus together. Today is a very special day because we have our baby dedication. Woohoo! Right now, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a very special time. I'm going to ask them up shortly. I'm going to call their names, but if all the parents can um, rise and come forward. We have two of our pastor's children that's being dedicated. We have baby Nathan Elijah Tan and baby Azrael Eliza Vergis, Pastor Aaron and Pastor Joel's um, babies. We also have Pastor Chu and Pastor Li Chu's grandchild, um, Ari Chiu Wei Sheng. If Yeah, awesome. We also have Adriana Lim, Asher Lo, Constant Lo, Eva Grace. If you can all just stand and just come forward as I read the names out. Axel T, Amory T, Caitlin Chow, Chloe Wong, Charlotte Wong, Claire Chua, Ellie Cheong, Evan Cheong. Emerlyn Ong, Hannah Lee, Hazel Lee, Isaac Wong, Jacob Asher Koh, Joanne Chan, Josiah Xiong, Quintesson, Quintesson, Samuel Ching, Shana Yo, um, Shana Yao, sorry, Cyrus Yao, Sophie Tang, Sophie Tio, Vanessa Kong, Josiah Kong, Zachary Ling, and Xander Ko. Let's give them all a big hand. You know, as they make their way forward, you know, it's such a joy to celebrate life. This is the third baby dedication that we are having this year. We managed to clear up all the MCO babies. You know, we, um, yeah, it's not just a baby dedication, it's child dedication. The younger, the older, we have them all here. Um, and some, uh, we, we still have people on the waiting list to come join us for our uh, baby, our child dedication next year. And it brings us such a joy um, to celebrate life. We have 33 children today that's being dedicated. And I know they're arranging them in the right place. And so even as they do that, very shortly, we will get... Wow, let's look at all these wonderful babies that's right in front of us. 
Wonderful. Can I get all the families to turn to the screens right now? We just want to declare these five commitments, the parents' commitment. As we bring before the children, the babies, to our mighty Saviour, to the Lord. We want parents to um, even declare these five commitments. And at the end, we will have a dedication for the baby. Um, but let's declare these five commitments together. Are you ready, parents? All right. And church, we all have children. Can we also declare these commitments as we support the parents in front um, to dedicate their babies? Ready? One, two, three. I commit to honour Jesus, the head of my house, by protecting my home, always acting in love, and guard what God is building in my family. I commit to intentionally nurture a loving environment by first loving my spouse as a strong foundation for my child and to constantly create a secure and loving atmosphere in my home. I commit to establish my household in Christ by growing my child in the ways of God through regular family altars devotional time at home. I commit to serve Jesus as a family, to safeguard the unity of my family and to sow into my child a heart to serve God's kingdom. I commit to release my child to his or her prophetic destiny by regularly praying for God's will over my child's future and trusting God in everything that he or she goes through. Amen, amen. And let's say this prayer together. One, two, three. Father God, thank you for blessing us with the gift of life. You are the head of our family and through you, all things hold together. Therefore, we are confident that he who began a good work by the gift of our child to us, will bring it to completion to the day of Christ Jesus. We dedicate our child to you and Jesus be the centre of our family. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Right now, can I get parents, you to turn to your child and let's speak life. Let's speak life into our child. And so I want you to articulate the name of your child Every sentence that we articulate and speak life over this child So you declare um, your, your child's name Nathan, you will love the Lord Are we ready? Ready? One, two, three You will love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength Say your child's name again You are precious gift made in the image of Christ, your child's name. You have a strong foundation in Jesus. You will encounter Jesus and always burn for Him. You will fear God and keep His commands. You have the peace of God in you through every trials and challenges. Your child's name. You will do great things for God. You are obedient and you will be a very good child. You will have a strong and loving relationship with your family, parents and siblings. You are our pride and joy. Declare your name, child's name the last time. You have a purpose and will walk in your prophetic destiny. Amen. Amen. Let me just say a prayer before we end this child dedication for all the babies that are here and all the children that is here. 
if you can all stretch out, congregation, if you can, you know, church, you can, if you can just stretch out your hands to all these new life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you give life and you give life to the full. And so, Lord, we ask that the fullness of God will come over each and every child right now. That your love and your presence will take hold of these children. And Lord, we just want to declare, as we have said, the five commitments from the parents and this list of declaration that we have spoken over this child, that it will come to pass. That the enemy cannot thwart the work of the Almighty over this child because he will have a great future ahead. So thank you, God, for each and every life that is here. We lift it up into your mighty hands. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you, parents. You may go back to your seat. You know, it's such a joy to have all these parents here. And when they go back, they actually, with every parent, we will give them a baby certificate, a baby dedication certificate to mark this significant event and also a gift. Right at this young age, they actually get a shirt with ships that says, Seekers of God, inspired to serve, building people. Yeah, come on. Praise God. I want to invite Pastor Lichu up on stage right now to give us the word of God. Let's give Pastor Lichu a big hand. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Come on, let's give all these parents a big round of applause. Really, it's a wonderful thing to see so many young parents coming up with their children. Come on, they, they deserve more than that. Come on, give them really a big round of applause. Whoa! Nothing is more beautiful than their children, right? That is the gift of God. Amen. All right. Even as we start, uh, come back to the book of Judges, today, I'm with, it's inc- incidentally, Uh, Both Wayan and I didn't know that we would choose the same topic or title. And the title is, Are You Willing? Wow, God must be speaking. Very seldom do the two speakers have exactly the same title. So, God must be speaking. So, why don't we just, uh, just quieten down our hearts and just present ourselves before this wonderful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Shall we do that? Just quieten down our hearts. Heavenly Father, we thank you that today, even as so many young babies and children come before you with their parents, we thank you you are the Father from whom all families of the earth are named. And so, Lord, even as we come before you, we thank you, O Lord God, that you are the head of every family. You are head of also the family called the church. And Lord, we thank you that when you are the head, we need never worry because you will lead us into green pastures, you restore us and you lead us into paths of righteousness for your own name's sake. And so, Lord, we dedicate even the remaining time to you and the rest of this weekend to you. In Jesus' name we pray and all God's people say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, give Jesus a big clap offering, yeah? It's always worth giving the Lord a really big offering. This morning, uh, this evening, as we go, we are going to do the book of Judges, chapter 4 and chapter 5. And to be honest, uh, I could have swung it either way. I think I was intentionally given chapter 4 and 5 by Pastor Chu because it's the only female judge in the whole of the book of Judges, right? And I think uh, Pastor Chu wanted me to, to represent that. But actually, I'm not going to talk about female leadership, although that is what I could have done, because I felt that the Lord, that at this season of world history, and the season even, and I didn't know that we would be speaking at, at this weekend, which is when elections is now on the, uh, around the corner, and even more important, that this weekend is our leadership weekend. Amen. Uh, our leaders, uh, four, five hundred of them, are coming in for a leadership uh, time with us starting from tomorrow night right on to the whole of Monday. And so this whole topic, Are You Willing?, involves all of us, both in this nation at this time and in this church in this season. Now, I want to talk about the word willing. The word willing is a very powerful word. And one of the things we human beings do not realize is what is called the power of the will of man. And I call it willingness, all right? The power of a man's and a woman's will. A human will is sovereign. The will of man is sovereign. What does that mean? That means nobody can force you to to take away your will. Actually, the will of man 
is sovereign. It's a God-given act. Even God cannot impose His will upon us unless we agree. The second thing we need to know is that Satan also cannot impose his will upon you and me unless we agree. So how does he do it? He does it by deceit. He does it by sending, giving us lies and, and decept deceptive ideas so that we would be willing, voluntarily follow him. Because of that, the will of man, when a person is willing voluntarily to agree to something, he has power. He has power. I just want to start with that because until we understand the sovereignty of the human will, we will often think that it is not important. Our choices are not important. Nothing could be more wrong. Romans 6.16 says this, And don't you know that when you offer yourselves, and the word offer yourselves means you willingly offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, or someone to whom you want to follow or you want to obey, you are slaves to the one you obey. See, the power of choice is very powerful. When you choose, I want to follow this way. Now, today we have a lot of young parents with us, and I want to say this to all young parents. Your choice of how you will lead your family is going to determine whose side your family is going to follow. In fact, not only will they follow, they become a slave, either to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. What does that mean? I'm going to bring you to an incident in Acts chapter, I think it's 16, all right, in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, in the next slide that you will see, I was reading this story of Paul and Silas going to the city of Lystra, when he came across this slave girl, and the whole purpose of this slave girl was she was, uh, she was made a slave, and she was uh, supposed to earn a lot of money for her bosses by telling fortunes. When this slave girl saw Paul, he said to him, you are the servant of the Most High God. Now, why did this passage of Scripture grip me? Let me share with you what's happening in the world. Today, actually, what I want to really bring an awareness to us is that while we are looking at the book of Judges with its seven cycles of oppression as well as liberation, actually, it is a book about spiritual warfare. There is a great war in the heavenly realms for the lives, the souls, and the control of the will of man. There's a great war out there. And many of us are oblivious of it or we think that it is not important. In fact, it's the most important thing. So when I came to this story in Acts of the Apostles, as I was reading that, I was at that time very, very troubled because I realized that there's a lot of evil in the world. The evil in the world sometimes is so great that when I think about it, wow, how do we bring up our grandchildren, our children, and our children's children in the new era that's coming? For instance, uh, there is genetic engineering coming on. And, and, and this is a frightening thing because with genetic engineering, things can change. We already know that the whole area of gender fluidity is so powerful that even just, okay, just before Liz Truss stepped down as Prime Minister, her government proposed a bill, which was a very serious bill. The bill was that young children going to school need not they can choose whatever gender of uniform they would wear. And to me, this is horrendous. And it is horrendous because a young child cannot yet exert their will. They do not have the power of choice. So what is happening? Who is it that is guiding the world into such insanity? Who is it that's guiding the whole world into such insanity? And that's when the Lord says this to me. And I just want to start here by presenting this very clearly to all of us so that we know that when God asks us, are you willing, he's dealing with a very serious issue. Because on the dark side, and I like what uh, when, when pa uh, Pastor Lindy came up and says, there's a lot of darkness, but it is like that. The dark side, the evil, Satan, has managed to deceive people to surrender their wills to him to obey Him, to follow Him. The moment a person surrenders himself to the dark side, to the paths of darkness, and agree to follow Him, he is a slave to Satan, a slave to the paths of darkness. It is these slaves of the power of darkness that will now come against 
the sons of light. So what happens in the whole story of Acts of the Apostles, of Saul, uh, Apostle Paul meeting this girl, the girl turns to him and says, you are the servant of the Most High God. That word servant is doulos. It is a willing slave. The reason why Paul was able to come against all the darkness in the whole Roman world at that time is because he chose and willingly became a servant or a slave of our Lord Jesus Christ. So today I want to start off very clearly by saying there's a clash in the heavenly realm. Spiritual warfare is nothing but a clash of the heavenly realm for the control of the will of human beings. If indeed in this auditorium, all of us are under, and we, we pray we are, are servants of the Lord Jesus Christ, not just servants as we do a bit here, serve us should know, but we're willing slaves of righteousness, the kingdom of God is able to advance. But if indeed we are not, and there are more, and we all know that, servants of unrighteousness, slaves of unrighteousness, darkness takes over a territory, which is why we have such an intense battle even for these elections and even for the hearts, the minds of the children today. The war, my friends, is ferocious. So I just want to lay it down here. I'm sorry I come to, to you with such, wow, such a heavy message. But it's a very deep thing in my heart. You know, brothers and sisters, unless the church awakens to what their role really is, actually, we're going to be defeated even before we start. Because we're totally unaware that God has given us the power of choice, the power to obey God the Most High God, a servant of the Most High God? Or are we allowing other people to obey the devil and they oppress us? Pastor Chu preached a very powerful message two weekends, or was it last weekend, on oppression. Oppression, as he describes it, is the power of darkness gripping us. And no matter how godly you are, when the oppression takes place, when the principalities and powers, when the dominant spirit is darkness, we will have to Come under it now. Turn with me to the book of Judges. And we're going to look from the book of Judges what happened. Just chapter 4. Alright, chapter 4. How does darkness come upon a group of people? We have heard it and you're going to hear it again and again. Uh, even as different people come up to share. When the people of a certain land reject God, like the Israelites, they did evil. They rejected God. They did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And so God allows them to reject him. You see, this is the power of the will. Remember I told you, the whole thing is about the power of your will. If you're willingly say, I don't want to obey God. I don't accept these truths of God. I don't accept this way of parenting. I don't accept it. The moment we say, I don't accept it, it's too old-fashioned. Now the devil, remember, knows how to deceive us. So he's, he's, if we say to them, these methods of parenting are too old-fashioned, there's a new method of parenting called gentle parenting, whatever that means. It sounds good, but is it really good? Who is behind it? What is the powers behind it? We actually come under oppression. And God cannot, you see, the sovereignty of the human will is that God cannot oppose our choice of will. So what can he do? That's it. You chose this way, this is what you get. And because of that, the Israelite nation at that time came under this guy called Jabin, but the most powerful thing was he had a commander called Sisera who had 100 iron chariots. And for 20 years, he, they oppressed the Israelites. This is just a picture of what God is trying to say to us. Even today, do you know Unless we are aware that the devil has only one desire to oppress the people of God. Unless we realize that, to put them under his thumb, actually, you can play church, you can come to church, you can, go to, you can stay at home, you can do whatever you like. Actually, the devil has the upper hand. So today, really, the question is, are we willing to rise up and to be a servant, a doulos of the Most High God. That's the real message. Are you and I willing just to come before God and not just to be a Christian, not just to be a believer, not just to pray a bit, sing some songs a bit, but to be a servant, a doulos of the Most High God. And we're going to explain what that means. The good news is this. In the spiritual warfare 
against darkness, darkness is not on the throne. Amen? Everybody says, praise the Lord. Amen? The person on the throne is still the Most High God. Everybody said, Most High God. He's still on the throne. And I want to draw your attention to the... So I'm going to read a little bit further. So join me, just read what's on the screen. And so at that time, there was this... Uh, the, 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 uh, let's go to verse... Yeah, verse 4. Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, was leading Israel at that time. She held court under the palm of Deborah uh, between these two places, uh, right? Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And then she began to, she began to tell Barak, she spoke to Dara, or she sent for Barak. Well, look at her, her power of the way she walks up. She sent for Barak and asked him and told him this, the Lord, the God of Israel commands you. So go also, to go take with you a 10,000 men of Naphtali and Zebulun and lead them to Mount Tabor. I will lead Sesera, the commander of Jabin's army, with the chariots and his troops to the Kishon River and give him into your hands. Now, as you read the story, Deborah goes on further and says to Barak, because Barak follows her and they go there, and even as the war is about to start, then Deborah says to Barak, Go. Now, this is the key verse. This is the day the Lord has given Sisera into your hands. Has not the Lord gone ahead of you? I just want you to look at this verse. This is the day the Lord has given Sisera over to you. Has not the Lord gone ahead of you? This is the good news. No matter how dark is darkness, no matter how many evil servants and slaves of darkness there are, God is leading the fight against the spiritual forces of darkness. And all of you who believe that, say amen. Come on, say amen. Amen. Come, give Jesus a big clap of earth. Yeah, That's what we're singing about all the time up here. What we're singing about all the time here, God is not here just to allow darkness to take over the earth. He's not allowing darkness to conquer the human beings, not just Christians, the whole world. God is not going to do that because God is the God of righteousness. And God is a God of justice. And God is a God of light. He will never, never allow oppression to come upon human beings. And that is why that verse is very powerful. Can I just have the verse again? Look at the phrase. The Lord has gone ahead of you. I want you to give you a very good news. Spiritual battles, the person who starts the battle is not you and me. I want Christians to understand that. You don't go simply and start your own spiritual battle. It is the Lord that leads us into battle. What does it mean the Lord has gone ahead of us? Number one, He chooses the timing. Look at this. This is the day the Lord has given Sisera to you. This is the day Malaysia is being taught. God is saying to us in Malaysia, Arise, shine, for your light has come. This is the day, parents, the Lord are asking you, as you dedicate your children, this is the day the Lord will go ahead of you for your children's future. This is the day, as I be, as the leaders come in together, next year's team taking the frontiers. Why do we have a team taking frontiers? Because this is the day. This is the time chosen by God to go into battle against the frontiers of darkness. And if you agree with that, say, Amen. Amen. If God doesn't choose the time, we can't simply go. And I'll tell you this, for us, for men, some of us who have been standing in the gap on behalf of this nation for the last maybe 10 years, this is the time. It is a now or never time. That is what's happening. And that is why during the 40 days of prayer and fasting, we took, I mean, almost two, 300 prayer leaders and pastors throughout the nation of Malaysia on training. And as they went through an intense season of training, everyone realized this is the time. And we all said it is a now or never time. Why do we call it a now or never time? Not because we said it, because the Lord is in this time. And when He's in this time, He has the strategy. Look at the strategy. And I will, in fact, in the NIV it says, and I will lure Sisera into that place where you will be able to defeat him. The word Leo means God is setting the strategy of war. So the good news is this. When we ask you, are you willing to give and surrender ourselves to be servants of the Most High God? It means that the Most High God is leading us into battle. Amen? 
And the Most High God will set the strategy for the battle. How do we do it? When do we do it? And that means when we are servant of the Most High God, we must choose to obey Him and not ourselves. That is the biggest problem. The biggest problem is if we obey ourselves. Now look at this story. Can you imagine if, you see this story is very interesting, right? Because there's Barak and there's Deborah. Deborah is a woman. Barak is a man. Barak is actually the leader of, that, of Israel at that time. I think he might have been the chief army officer. I don't know what his title is. I don't know. But Deborah had a word from the Lord. But together, they had to move together to win the war. What is it that both of them must do? What is it that both of them must do? They must both be willing. They must both be willing. Number one, who was willing? Deborah was the first to be willing. It says in Deborah, uh, in Judges chapter 5, even as village life ceased in Israel, and that means when there is darkness, it affects economy, it affects family life, it affects every kind of life. It affects political life, it affects all kinds of life. If you read that chapter in Judges chapter 5, it talks about the danger of going out in the streets. You couldn't even go out to the streets because there was oppression, there was danger, there was constant uh, un in insecurity, village life ceased. While darkness was raining, God had aroused someone and that woman was Deborah. So when we talk about spiritual warfare, when God is about to go into battle, He looks for the willing. He looks for those, not just willing as in willing, those who say, I am sold out for God, I see oppression, I see darkness, but I'm not going to allow darkness to overcome me. I'm going to step out, and as I step out, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro. Second Chronicles 16 verse 9 has a very powerful verse, one of my favorite verses. Can you imagine the eyes of the Lord running to and fro throughout the whole earth? to look for one person, one man, one woman who would be fully willing to follow him, fully committed towards him. That is what happened to Deborah. That is what happened to Israel. Why was it that in Judges chapter 4 and 5, and you're going to hear in the story of Gideon, same story, the story of Ehud, same story. When oppression comes, God rises up. But as God rises up, there must be people who are willing and when that person is willing, whoa, heaven and earth respond. Amen? Because Deborah was willing, I tell you my favorite verse in the book of Judges is Judges chapter 5, verse 2. When the princes of Israel take the lead, and when the people willingly offer themselves, praise the Lord. You know, many, many years ago, uh, you know, we all love to say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, right? So I was reading this verse. What, when you, you and I should really shout, praise the Lord, when this happens. When there are leaders, leaders in churches, leaders in government, leaders in society, leaders in family, when family heads are willing to lead, and the people willingly volunteer themselves. In another version, it says, and the people willingly volunteer them themselves. It's not by force, not by coercion, but they are willing. And there's nothing more powerful than a will willing servant of the Lord. When that happens, whole of heaven shouts, praise the Lord. And do you know something? Tomorrow night onwards, we are having 400 leaders and calls coming in, I don't know, 400, 500, I don't know. So praise the Lord. But that is when we need to train them. The key is not whether they can, can do it or cannot do it. The key is not whether they know how to do it. The key is not whether they got it right or got it wrong. The key is willingness. Willingness, willingness. Because when there is willingness, God can now move in. So what happens? Now, I want to show you the strategy of God. Barak is the leader. Deborah is the prophetess. In this strategy of working for the kingdom of God, when we say we are willing, it doesn't mean all of us do the same thing. It doesn't mean we all uh, take on the same roles. We must recognize that there are different roles for different people and different giftings. Deborah's gifting is that she can hear the word of God and she, she obviously has spent time with the Lord and she can release the prophetic word of the Lord. 
but she never wanted to lead and she never felt that that was her role. And I want to say this, the key therefore in a church is that while there may be people who have heard from the Lord, but they are not necessarily the leaders, the leaders must also rise. So in the cell group or in the ministry, there may be people who are able to do certain things, but there must be leaders. And leaders must appreciate the different roles of these people that come to form their groups. So what happens? Barak then agrees to lead. So when Barak leads, I want to give you this thing. When we talk about willing, it's not willing to do things our way. Remember, the war is the Lord's, the battle is the Lord's, he sets the timing, he sets the strategy. Imagine now, Barak says to, the, says to his, friend, to his uh, soldiers, I'm not going to go because Deborah is a woman. Do you know in those days, women are totally not allowed to lead? That women leadership was a no-no area because they're not even an entity. They were not even had value. They're not even, uh, they don't even have human rights. They, they, no rights are afforded to women at those times. But for Barak to agree to listen to Deborah, that is what it means. He is willing. He's willing to move out of the norm. He's willing to go beyond what he normally would have done. He's willing. And so what is he willing? He's willing to follow the strategy of God. And the strategy of God required him to move in a totally different direction from the normal. Look at Deborah. What is it that she was willing? Deborah had a word from God. She had to be willing with great courage and fear of, you know, when women go into a man's territory, they go where angels fear to tread. So can you imagine her? Believe me, I know that. Do you know, I'll tell you some of my stories in leading the Malaysian United Firewall. Having to go to these great bishops and talk to them is something is so frightening. But she had to be willing to go to him and not just to go to him, to summon him. The Lord has commanded you. She didn't mince it down. She didn't give it as a suggestion. She didn't say, you know what, Barak, I think huh, God wants you to go out and fight. She didn't say it that way. She summoned him and she says, look, Barak, I have a word from the Lord. The Lord says to you, go, take 10,000 men from the tribe of Naphtali, from the tribe of, uh, what, what a tribe, can't remember, Zebulun, and go and fight this battle. What was she willing to do? She was willing again to enter and do something risky. Risky. But she was a woman. What if she's shut down? What if she totally is... They didn't regard much for her. She didn't think much of her. What if she refused? Because nobody, no woman goes to a general and tells a general what to do. No women at that time would ever do that. In fact, even up to now, it would be hard for a woman prophet to go and tell a general what to do. But she was willing to do what God commanded her to do. Willingness is really about a subservient attitude, really treating God as the highest order, the most high God, and being willing almost to be a slave, to obey Him regardless. That is willingness. Willingness is not just, I'm willing to, I'm willing to be an usher. No, it's more than that. It is more than that. That is what we're talking about in spiritual warfare. Let me just go on. So who are the people who are willing? So let's read this verse. The beautiful thing is this. Once the leaders move, the people follow. Everybody says that. Once leaders move, the people will follow. Amen. All of us who are leaders here, come on, let's say it together. This weekend is leaders meeting, come on. Once leaders are willing, the people will follow. The hardest, you know there's a dearth of leadership in the world today. If you look at the whole crisis in the United Kingdom, I just saw a very funny video uh, that my brother sent me. It's called, uh, the United Kingdom is advertising for a job called the Prime Minister of United Kingdom. Would you like to apply? I saw that video, it's quite funny. But th the whole problem is that leadership is scarce. Leadership is scarce. And that is why, even at this leadership weekend, for all of you who are leaders, don't look down about being a leader. Do not regard it as something, oh, yeah, I don't want to, I can't. No. Leadership is influence. But the key about leadership is not that you know what to do. The key of leadership is that you're willing to become a servant of the Most High God. You take your instructions, you follow it through. And so because Barak was willing, 
Deborah was willing, the people were willing. The remnant of the nobles came down. The people of the Lord came down to me against the mighty. Some came from Ephraim. Some came from Benjamin. Some from Machir. Captains came down. So the warriors started coming down. From Zebulun, those who bear a commander's staff. So commanders started coming down. Skilled fighters came down. And the princes of Issachar were with Deborah. And Issachar was with Barak. And the people of Zebulun, now look at this. Even as they go in, as they are willing... The thing is that they risked their lives. The people of Zebulun risked their very lives. So did Naphtali on the, in, in this battle. Willingness always comes with a price. Now, I'll just give you the next slide, but I want to talk about the one after it. When we are willing, three things happen. So I'll give you the last verse of Judges chapter 4. When we are willing, three things happen. When we are willing, the moment... It's the power of the human will, remember? Do you know something? When people are willing to follow Satan wholeheartedly, the world is at great risk. That is why darkness is powerful. Darkness is powerful not because darkness is powerful. Darkness is powerful because some human beings have been deceived into surrendering their whole will and life to darkness. And it has power because it is relentless. But at the same time, God's people has power when they are willing to come to God and surrender and give up of their will wholeheartedly to God. When that happens, God takes over. God subdued Jabin that day in the presence of the children of Israel. And I love this. Once the war moves forward and God pushes into into the front, pushes and gives victory ground for us, gives us a ground to move forward, actually, the people of Israel grew stronger and stronger. In other words, courage will rise. Skills will, will arise. The key starts with willing soldiers. If they're willing people, if the servants of God are willing, God fights the battle. You may say at this moment, I'm very weak. I don't know how to do it. But you know what? As we step forward and as we serve the God of the most high God, we grow stronger and stronger. Our skills improve, our courage improves, our faith improves. And as we grow stronger and stronger, who are the people that completely destroyed Jabin, king of Canaan? Not God, the children of Israel. They destroyed Jabin, the king of Canaan. So brothers and sisters, there's a spiritual war out there. A lot of us, you know, every time we come into church, we are always drowned by our problems. Always drowned by, well, we have financial problems, we have political problems, we have family problems. Can I submit to you, do not start with all the problems. Start with asking ourselves, who is on the throne? The Most High God. Who is leading us into battle? The Most High God. Now am I willing to follow Him? Because if I'm willing to follow Him, whether it's on the family front, whether it's on the work front or whether it's on the political front, God will begin to take us and we will grow stronger and stronger. And even darkness that attacks our families, darkness that attacks our churches, darkness that attacks our nations, they will be destroyed. And that is how revival comes. What is revival? Revival is the divine visitation of God. When the powers of darkness have been weakened and the grips of darkness have been destroyed, that is how revival comes. But it cannot come. Revival cannot come just because we want revival. Revival can only come when the people of God rise within them a willpower to move forward, to submit themselves to God, to advance God's kingdom, to offer themselves willingly to serve God's purposes. Amen? Amen? So, you know, when you look at the nation and you think about all that, do not panic. Because there are three things that is needed when we're willing. Number one, when we say we're willing, we must be willing to trust God. We must believe when God says, this is the time, move forward. This is the time, commit yourselves to pray. This is the time, commit yourselves to act. This is the time, commit yourselves to a godly parenting. This is the time when you and I are going to lead the church to take on frontiers in the digital space. This is the time that is, we have to say Wow, I'm not sure if this is the time. You have to say no. If God says this is the time, this is the time. 
That's trust. Trust. If can you imagine if Barak had said, No, I don't I don't believe you, Deborah. I don't trust you, Deborah. I'm not sure, Deborah. And Deborah says, I'm also not sure. Nothing would have happened. Jabin, the king of Canaan, would continue to rule and oppress Israel for the next 500 years. That is what the book of Judges is all about. God moving forward and generals rising up to lead all the people being willing. That's all about the book of Judges. Every story you hear is about the people of God rising up, willing to follow God into battle. So the first thing to be willing is you must trust God. Second is commitment. The real essence of willingness is commitment. And let me share with you about commitment. So I told you that at the moment, because we know this is the time of malicious timing for the kingdom of darkness. It's not about politics. It's about the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of God. God is advancing His kingdom. And there's lots of good news. I want to tell you, in Sarawak alone, I heard that under the Iban revival movement, thousands have come to know the Lord. In two years of the pandemic, they baptized 800 to 900 people. Come on. This is what's happening, right? This is what's happening. Only this week, I heard from the BEM side, right? BEM president. BEM is Borneo Evangelical Mission, which is the SIB equivalent in Sarawak, also said that they have been finding thousands are coming to know the Lord in Sarawak from all the parts and the interior of Sarawak. So much so that the president has no time to come and meet Pastor Chu. Lah. That's why no time. And that's a good reason to have no time, right? So the kingdom of God is advancing. But as they advance, it is all about commitment. It's not about romantic ideas of willingness. It's not romantic ideas of, 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 of revival. It's not. That doesn't cut. And so many of us who are committed to stand in the gap, to be the Debras, to pray and to intercede for the nation, we have come into training. So we took in a lot of pastors. We took in a lot of prayer leaders. Now, at the end of 21, no, how many days of training? Six weeks of training, going through the whole of Malaysia. We came to this point and we told them, we are not here just to train you, or not just here to give you teaching. Malaysians love teaching, but teaching by itself is not commitment. Teaching doesn't make us willing unless we are willing and unless we are committed. So for us, on the Malaysian United Firewall, when we took the people through the training, we said to them very simply, we are not here just to give you good... Beautiful stories about revival. We're not here just to tell you about all the things about God. We need commitment. And the commitment was five areas of commitment. Number one, they had to commit that they would contend for the destiny of Malaysia. And they would commit to going through training. They would come in every month to be further trained. Secondly, they would commit to building their own prayer altars, to continue to listen to the tapes again, the recordings again, to grow it more. Why? Because it is a battle. You cannot just send any type of people into battle. Commitment causes the people of God to grow more skilled, more strong, more able. Amen? Nobody sends untrained people into battle. And not only that, we told them that you have to be committed to find a small group and begin to share with them and grow them. That is called commitment. But the next level of commitment was more thorough. The next level of commitment that we are asking from the people on the Malaysia, uh, under this training for the raising up the army of God in Malaysia, because Malaysia is entering her destiny, is to ask people to commit to three weeks, day and night, on a solid boot camp. Do you know something? When that commitment came, it was tough. I want to say this to us in Malaysia. We long for transformation. We long for change in our nation. But are we willing to pay the price? The bottom line is still the price. When I went to Indonesia, I was so amazed at Indonesia. Do you know if you go to Indonesia today, the streets of Jakarta are clean. Do you know if you go to Indonesia today, there's an efficiency about them that is not found in Malaysia. What happened in Indonesia? Indonesians have been praying for 25 years, but it's not prayer alone. It is their willingness to walk beyond prayer towards commitment. And I'll tell you what Indonesians do that is different from us. 
For many of us in Malaysia, we're willing to pray. But even in prayer, we're not willing to go 24 hours. We're not willing to pay the price. We're not willing to go the next level that would lead to transformation. But the Indonesians are very different. I'll give you just two areas. Just two areas, both on the prayer side, on the, on, the, on the church side, and on the marketplace side. The level of commitment of the Indonesians is totally different. On the prayer side, do you know in almost every big city in Indonesia, there's a prayer tower that's 24 hours, non-stop. And it's been going on for more than 10, 15 years. And do you know if you come into those prayer hours of prayer that people are committed to pray, if you're five minutes late, they actually don't admit you. Because they mean business with God. Why? You may say, why? Why? Because it is a war. It is not about the... It's not about anything you like. It is about commitment. Not only that, in almost every big city, and this was told to me by the pastors themselves, that in almost every big city in Indonesia, the pastors in that region, in that city, they come together and they do a prayer drive of that city from 12 midnight to 2 a.m. Wow. So the people in Malaysia, when we ask them to commit, they say, we, are we have no time, we are too busy. Do you not think that the Indonesian pastors are also very busy people? They also have no time. But why do they do this? Because they are willing to follow their commander-in-chief. They have heard from the Lord, that is a strategy of the Lord, and they are doing it. And because of that, even in the marketplace, and because I'm also there to learn about the marketplace leadership, they're also bringing transformation into the marketplace. So great is it, and when you meet the marketplace leaders in Indonesia, they don't just talk about, oh, I am uh, successful here and all that. It is their vision to bring the kingdom of God into the marketplace. So I went to, I visited a few companies. One company nurtures young talents, talents from as young as 14 years old, they were nurture. Why are they nurturing young talents? They're taking young children and discipling them in the godly values. And these young children, and not, not just children, but teenagers and those who are very good, they're already cutting alb uh, albums on the YouTube and all that. And they nurture them in godly values. So much so that when these young people and when these singers and these, uh, these singers, they, take, they enter the, the, the whole arena of influence, they're truly able to influence. And so I actually took a picture. I wish I'd shown you the picture. But this very famous, I don't know his name, okay? A very famous pop singer in uh, Indonesia. He is so well nurtured by these godly leaders in industry of this whole uh, entertainment industry. The man's name is Jonathan, the, 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 not, not the singer, but the owner. That he now doesn't drink, does, doesn't play around, doesn't sleep around, and he even promotes God, uh, uh, marriages that are faithful to, to your wife. And because of this, it is truly bringing transformation to the next generation. I was just blown away that they actually take in young talents and begin to nurture them, disciple them to influence the kingdom, to come against the kingdom of darkness. That is something. That is something. But how did they do that? Whoa, they have to commit. They pay a price. Are they popular? Sometimes it says companies will not want to cut the albums with them, but it says, I'm prepared not to, cut at, not to cut the albums with those who are not prepared to follow these principles. But you know what? I'm not worried about that. Because when I find these people and I nurture them, they will be the ones who can push and come against the kingdom of darkness. Another company that I visited, this company is the manufacturer of children's garments, babies' garments, baby uh, nappies, and all this kind of stuff. One of the biggest. It is an amazing story. I wish some of you would ever have a chance to visit this company. Maybe next year when we do workplace, invite these two sisters to come. They're amazing young girls. They run this factory. When I first went in 2018, the factory only housed about 200 to 400 workers. When I went this time, they built a factory to house 2,000 workers. Do you know what is the vision statement of their company? Nurturing quality anak bangsa through business. Nurturing quality, raising quality anak bangsa through business. That is why Indonesia is different. You know why it's different? 
The people of God in Indonesia has decided that it's not just about talk. It's not just about attending conferences. It is putting what they have learned, what God wants them to do, into action. And because of that, there is a change. I believe that we will do that as well in Malaysia. I believe that we will also be able to see changes because already things are happening, all right? We see the good news in, in Sarawak. When I watched Solomon Bul uh, uh, Rachel Bulan and Sabrina Lau, I said, wow, these two girls are more than willing. They are willing to commit all the way. And, and it's an amazing story. But what happens when we're unwilling, all right? So let's look at the unwilling. In the book of Judges, let's go back to them. Like in any place in the world, like in any church, there will always be the unwilling. Why are these people unwilling? So let's, let's look at the unwilling. The unwilling is J Judges chapter 5. Let's read the, the group of people that are unwilling. Gilead stayed beyond the Jordan. And Dan, why did he linger by the ships? Asher remained on the coastline and stayed in the coast. Sorry, I missed up one. Reuben, why did you say, stay among the campfires to hear the whistling for the flocks? In the district of Reuben, there was much searching of heart. The word searching of heart. Why, do, why, why is it that we are unwilling? What makes us unwilling? What makes us... Actually, when we say we are unwilling, usually it starts like that. We are debating. We are asking ourselves. We are analysing. We are studying. You know, I, I've even come across this situation because, you know, as we lead the, the movement of God to pray and stand in the gap for our nation, you see a lot of stuff. You see a lot of stuff. Even very, very seasoned uh, leaders will begin to say, really, man? Then they begin to say, you know, uh, uh, this, that, and the other. Give you all kinds of ideas. And there's a lot of debate going on and a lot of talk going on and much searching of heart. What is searching of heart? Searching of heart means, I'm not sure. I don't know whether this is of God. I don't know if we should go or not, whether this is the right time or not. And not only is there a searching of heart, with the searching of heart, they linger in the comfort zone. So three reasons. Three reasons why this group of people, Dan, Reuben, I think it's the tribe of Asher as well. Why is it that they were not willing? Three reasons. Number one, because of unbelief. They did not believe that this is the season that God was asking them to move. They probably did not even believe that God would win this war against Jabin, the king of Canaan. The second reason is not just unbelief, but it is un, uh, unaware. Unaware. Do you know what's unaware? Unaware means they're unaware that God is leading the battle. One of the big mistakes we make is that two things about being unaware. It is bad enough to not believe and trust God. But what we don't realize is that we're unaware of two things. We think to ourselves, Wow, for me to step out like that and bring transformation to our nation, for me to step out like that to defeat the forces of darkness, it comes with a heavy price. Three weeks of boot camp. How can I afford it? That's a high price to pay. But I want to say, I'm not asking everyone to go to boot camp, incidentally, we don't have space for that, but I'm just giving you an example of price to pay in order to bring transformation. But I want to say this. When the kingdom of God and the people of God are unwilling to pay the price, they will have to pay a higher price when the devil rules. Let me say it one more time. Be aware, my brothers and sisters, even as fathers and mothers bringing up your children, if you're unwilling to now step out of the flow of people who are wanting to follow this way and you are unpopular, you are following the other way. If you are unwilling to do that, you may say it's a high price to pay. My children won't get to do it. They have to come to church. I want them to go to this. I want them to go to that. You will have, you are unwilling to pay that price, you will have to pay a higher price because the devil has his servants who are willing to fight to the end for your soul and my soul and the souls of our children. So do not think that just because we are not willing to pay this price, we are not going to have to pay any price. That is a lie. When our country comes under darkness, the price to pay is far more than the price that I ask us now to do. If we ask you to pray 24 hours, that's a small price to pay compared to 24 years of oppression. 
far lower price. 24 hours of prayer is nothing compared to 24 years of oppression affecting many generations. The second thing we're unaware, we're unaware that the moment we trust God, God leads us. Not only that, willingness, I told you, has power. What is the power? Spiritual authority. When Paul met that girl, the girl looked at him and says, this man has power. He is the servant of the Most High God, which is why she said, don't come and torment us. What we don't realize is this, and what we're unaware is this, we call the shots. We have spiritual authority. But if you and I don't do anything about it, the devil continues to make us unconcerned. Three reasons why we are unwilling. Unbelief, unaware, unconcerned. You know, I look at GE 15. There's a difference between GE 14 and GE 15. In GE 14, the spirit of the people was at an all-time high. The spirit of the people were willing to really go the extra mile. I heard of the stories of how the postal votes were transported on bicycles, on, 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 on all kinds of things. Incidentally, the postal votes, the person that is committed to doing the postal votes is amazing. He's going all out to get postal votes. Is it easy for him? Does he have to pay a price? Of course. But why is he doing it? Because it's about light versus darkness. That's why he's doing it. But you know, in G14, we all rallied around it. We were willing to get up early. We were willing to go and vote. We were willing to do this. The spirit of the people were willing. What is wrong with GE15? The spirit of the people. Unconcerned. If you and I are unconcerned, darkness rules. You may say to me, Pastor Lee Chiu, are you sure uh, this is going to happen? No. It's not about who is going to win. It's not about who is going to win. It is about the fact that you and I are servants of the Most High God. And the servants of the Most High God believe that their vote is standing for righteousness. Amen? How many of you want to stand for righteousness? Come on! How many of you? How many of you are standing for righteousness? That is where your vote counts. Even if we don't get what we want, that's not our problem. God will count that for us. Amen? And you never know how God works. It may not be now, it may not be this. How do we know how God works? You and I is not supposed to know exactly how God works. You and I are supposed just to be willing. Willing. Everybody shout, willing. Are you willing? That's the main thing. And I do not want us to go around telling us, no use one, no use one. The only thing necessary for evil to triumph is when good men do nothing. Because then the evil will never give up. They, uh, they are willing. They are willing. But will the people of God be willing? And I want to ask you to be willing to do two things. Number one, adopt a constituency. On the Malaysian United Firewall, we've asked people to adopt a constituency. Not just one. Adopt not just your own constituency where you vote. Adopt two or three others which have nobody to pray for them. What do we want to do? Go, sell groups. Whatever groups, find your friends in your workplace group. Go and pray, do a prayer drive in that constituency. Sabah Burnham has no one adopting that constituency. Many places in Pahang has no one adopting those constituencies. Go to the website. Come on, everybody, take a picture. Go to the website. Adopt a constituency. Pray for it. Why? Because you have spiritual authority. Whatever you bless will be blessed. We are not asking you to go into politics. We are asking you to bless that constituency. We are asking you to take an interest in that constituency. We are asking you to join God. And God will tell you how to pray even. And if you go onto the website, we even have prayers that declares what the sovereignty and the rule of God at this season. And secondly, it is about voting. I want you to know that only 18 means that 18 years old and above, they can vote. Parents, encourage your children to go out. And I want to say this, I also want to say this, uh, incidentally, in case you didn't know, you don't have to register for voting nowadays, you just go and vote, alright, just go and vote. But let me end with this, two things, first a quotation from Billy Graham, Billy Graham says this, in a world that might say one, uh, one vote doesn't matter, in a world that might say one vote doesn't matter, it does matter because that very one person, each person, is of infinite worth and value to God. Your vote is a declaration of importance as a person 
and a citizen. In other words, are you willing, no matter how, what the weather will be, now this is how you go to the next mile. Don't join everybody and worry about the weather. I almost feel like God is watching whether you are willing to go out in spite of the weather. I almost feel like God is going to show us miracles and signs and wonders when we rise up and be willing. Remember, when you are willing, God does the impossible. All, all Barak and Deborah had to do was to go into battle. After that, God did the rest. God did the rest. God destroyed Sisera. But you must be willing. You must, and willing is not just I'm willing. I'm willing if the weather is nice. I'm willing if it's convenient. No, you must be committed. Committed. Then God will move. I want to end with this powerful verse that I saw this morning. The Lord led me to this verse. In Hebrews chapter, I think it's Hebrews chapter 9. Or Hebrews chapter 10. Let's read this together, shall we? And with this I end. This is the season when God is saying this to us. The battle against darkness is going to increase. It's not just in our nation, it's in the whole world. Pastor Chiu came back from a conference last weekend and he began to share a lot of things that's happening in the world that was frightening. Frightening. The whole of COVID-19 is only the beginning of an era of darkness versus light that's going to escalate until Jesus comes again. What is the posture of the believer in this season? So let's read this together, shall we? One, two, three. You, you need, need to, to persevere. Come on, let's do this strong and loud. One, two, three. You, you need, need to, to persevere, persevere so, so that, that when you have, have done the will of God, God you will receive what He has promised. promised. For, in For in just, just a little while, He who is coming will come and will not delay. delay. But my righteous one will live by faith. But I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. But, but we, we do not, not belong, belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. This is the key verse God gave to me, even as I prepared this. We are coming towards a different season of world history. The lines are being drawn, which is why next year, the theme, Taking Frontiers, takes on a whole new meaning. Taking Frontiers is not for those who are sitting on the sidelines. It's not for those who are looking like the tribe of Dan to be comfortable and stay by the coves and listen to the whistling of the leaves. Taking frontiers is not for those who is not prepared to take risks. Taking frontiers is not for those who are not committed. Taking frontiers can only happen if we are committed and we are willing. The frontiers that we are taking is family, encountering with God, the digital space and the harvest. These are huge frontiers, huge frontiers. But in these frontiers, God is leading the battle. But I'll say this to you, I want to just have that verse again. It says in Hebrews 9, if we, Hebrews 10, if we shrink back, He is not pleased. If we shrink back, like the tribe of Dan, like the tribe of Asher, he is not pleased. We all want to please the Lord, right? As believers. But if we shrink back, He is not pleased. But praise the Lord, SIB. Everyone in SIB, let's stand up. Let's stand up and say, We do not belong to those who shrink back. Come on. One, two, three. We do not belong to those who shrink back. One, two, three. We do not belong to the ones who shrink back. One more time. We do not belong to those who shrink back. Come on, let's raise our voices and pray. Lord Jesus, hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Heavenly Father. Father, even this morning, this evening, oh Lord God, you're asking us, are we willing? Are we willing to be servants of the Most High God? Even as the servants of darkness are pushing an ungodly agenda, are we willing to serve the Kingdom of God, oh Lord God? Father, we thank you, Lord God. We do not want to be those who shrink back, oh Lord God. But we want, oh Lord God, to be those who will follow you, oh Lord God. Who will follow you, who will believe in you, who will trust in you, and who will move forward, oh Lord God. We are willing, oh Lord God, to even pay the price, oh Lord God. Because we realize that the price to be paid is nothing compared to the price the evil one wants us to pay. Come, let's worship. Let's worship.
Malaysia. Do you think he is a DAP supporter? Do you think he is a Bahasa, what, Barisa National supporter? Do you think he is a no, what? No, no, no. In heaven, no, there is no, no, no political parties. <laughs> when he looks down from heaven, he looks at Malaysia. He sees souls saved. He wants a peaceful Malaysia, harmonious Malaysia, so that the gospel of Jesus Christ can continue. That's God. It's not even what kind of government is that there will be peace on the land. So when we pray, we don't pray, ah, let the whatever win. Ah. No, we pray for peace. We pray that there will be some kind of a righteous government. First Timothy ma, chapter 2, ma, remember? You bring supplications and lift up holy hands so that there is peace in the land. The reason why the gospel of Jesus Christ spread wide and far in the early church days is because of Pax Romana, peace in the Roman Empire. Roads, communication, and that's what God is interested in. Salvation of souls, revival in the land. Not whether BN will win or lose, uh, that's not enough. But we pray what? Pray for peace. Amen? We pray for peace. Isn't it more important? Yes. So there will be no trouble, right? So there will be peace. Whoever comes, it doesn't matter as long as there is peace in the land. And all of us are given a rightful place. Religious freedom will continue in our land. That's more important. Amen? So that's what we pray for. Amen? And God is looking for willing people who are prepared to stand in the gap on behalf of our nation. And my prayer and our prayer is God will find somebody, at least one church lah, in Malaysia, and that's SIBKL. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Come on, let's all pray. Let's get Kali Man. Come on. Why do you pray? Why don't we just pray for our Come on, let's pray, let's pray. Let's pray. I know time is going on. But let's pray for our nation. It's okay with you? Yeah, because the nation is at a crossroads. Let's pray for our nation. Oh, Ramanda Let's sing as a prayer to the Lord. Should we do that? Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come quickly. Your will be done the same. Oh, hallelujah. On earth as it is. Malaysia, Amen. Yes, Lord, let your will be done. Amen.
find it hard to understand how God works. And many of us, because of that, we would find it hard to even know how to follow God wholeheartedly. Do you know that is not a problem to God? All we are needed to do is to say to the Lord, Lord Jesus, I am willing to be made willing. I may not understand how to willingly follow you now, how to be committed in this way, but I'm willing to learn. And if that is you, why don't you put up your hands? You say, Lord, I'm willing. I'm willing, Lord, I'm willing. I cannot afford to have darkness rule our nation. I'm willing. Come, let's just say to the Lord, the Lord is a good God. He knows us. He knows our frame. He knows everything about us. But when He sees us, He's saying to us, do not be concerned that you don't know. Just follow me. Just follow me. Just follow me. Heavenly Father, wow, I just feel something. Heavenly Father, I see a great spirit moving over our people, Lord, over everyone here. I see a spirit of willingness, a spirit of spirit that says, no more. We cannot afford to have darkness take over our families, darkness take over our workplaces, darkness take over our economies, darkness take over nations. Heavenly Father, even as we put up our hands, we are saying, oh Lord God, we may not know how to do things, we may not know what it means to be willing, but Lord, this is us, oh Lord God. I am willing Lord God yes. I'm willing oh yes. Lord God will you teach yes. me will you teach me what it means to serve you will you teach me what it means even to be willing to be a leader will you teach me what it means willing even to serve in the in the kingdom of God whether in church or in my workplace help me Lord God to be willing Lord Jesus I'm willing even to go out and vote even though I don't want to I'm willing oh Lord God I'm willing even to be trained to be a pacha I'm willing even oh Lord God to share things with other people oh Lord God Father, there's a power in our willingness. We thank you, Lord God, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, release, oh Lord God, the spirit of willingness to all of us, oh Lord God. Take away, we come against the spirit of deceit that the evil one has crippled us, oh Lord God. And we keep saying we can't. Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, today I declare that our hands are lifted up. We will say we can do this with our help of our God. And all God's people shout, Amen. Amen. Yours. It's a kingdom yours. It's a power yours. It's a glory forever. Amen. Yours. It's a kingdom yours. It's a power yours. It's a glory forever. Amen. Let's turn your hands as we close. Oh, Father God, we want to commit ourselves, just only, just talk only, but walk our talk. That we will be not just unconcerned because this is about the future of our children. That even as we have dedicated our children and our grandchildren today, we want to pray that they will find a place in Malaysia not in another country that there is hope and a future in our land and it begins now it starts today it starts with us so God we pray that even as we move now towards the elections it doesn't really matter who wins but more important your will be done as it is on earth so be it in as it is in heaven so be it on earth your will be done because yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever so God we say your will be done your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven that's the main thing Lord your will be done in our nation so separate now with your blessing bring us back Lord not just be motivated but help us to translate what you have spoken into action so that in the coming days we continue to pray in the coming days we continue to stand in the gap on behalf of our nation so thank you Jesus and now the Lord bless you and keep you this day the Lord make his face to shine upon you always and be gracious to you may the Lord 
turn his wonderful face to all of you and your family and always give you shalom in jesus name we pray the gospel people say amen, amen. amen. god bless you you can come back tomorrow and hear pastor wayan's version of are you willing amen god bless you have a wonderful week If you would like someone to pray for you, head over to the link and our pastors and leaders would love to pray and connect with you. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunanyin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. Hi everyone! Would you like to get to know SIBKL a little bit more? If you've ever had such questions like, how can I join a cell group? How can I serve in a ministry? How can I be discipled? How can I be a member? How can I join one of our SIBKL events? Or any other questions, then I invite you to click on the link below and we will connect with each other via WhatsApp. One of our connect leaders will reach out to you. We would love to connect with you. So we invite you to connect with us. God bless.